So in hair mineral analysis, there's one more of the major minerals that we look at, and that is potassium. Now, potassium is a solvent. It's an alkaline-forming mineral. Uh, it's also used in water softeners to help uh, reduce the hardness of water. So it helps with intra, within the cell, intracellular regulation of fluid balance, that in combination with sodium. So uh, there are various functions of, of potassium, and that's represented by K, potassium. Uh, Kali, K-A-L-I, is why it's a K, um, why the chemical element name is a K. And so it functions in the circulation. It lowers heart rate and dilates the arteries. It is part of the excretory system. It helps to maintain the acid-base balance of our body. It is related to digestion. It increases your di digestive tract activity. In, in other words, it speeds up motility of your intestines. If you overdose on magnesium, then you will have, you can have diarrhea. So that is one way that we figure out the dosages of potassium. It, it would take a really huge amount of potassium to actually cause that activity, whereas magnesium is much more active. It can create a much quicker response on intestinal motility. And it's related to the endocrine system. Potassium raises aldosterone and other hormones. Aldosterone is one of the ones in the adrenal gland. And it is related to carbohydrate metabolism, the, the metabolism of sugars. Now, potassium deficiency has various symptoms. Fatigue, just like many of the other uh, minerals, if there is not enough, you can get fatigue as well as weakness. And this would be muscle weakness. You can have skin problems, water retention. Many people who are diabetic or have uh, blood pressure issues retain water. And so if you don't have enough potassium, you will retain water and get swelling. It's also related to a deficiency is related to low blood sugar, irregular heartbeat, constipation, as well as allergies. So what are some food sources that um, are rich in potassium? Well, seafood, halibut, herring, cod, and sardines. Nuts and seeds, almost all have a lot of potassium. Fruits, avocados, dates, figs, prunes, and raisins. As far as the vegetables, garlic, horseradish, lentils, parsley, spinach, potatoes, artichokes, lentils, and greens. Grains, you find it uh, in high quantities in buckwheat, rye, and wheat bran. Once again, the bran of wheat is very important for all kinds of, of minerals. That, and other substances and uh, vitamins that are necessary for our body to work well, and which is why we suggest, if you are not gluten insensitive, to get whole grain breads and pastas if your system can um, digest it. And if it can't, then there are things that can be done to help the body's own digestive process be able to process these better and actually use and utilize the whole grain. And it also is found in chocolate, molasses, mushrooms, kelp, and yeast. So figuring out what your potassium levels are in your blood, of course, that's very important, but actually finding out what it is in the hair is going to tell us how well you're utilizing potassium in all other parts of the body and whether you're a fast or slow uh, metabolizer as well as uh, you're in your immunological status. So these are reasons why we do this kind of testing in the office to get very important information about long-term conditions that you may have been struggling with for a long time and you haven't actually got a, a solution as to why that's going on. And this particular test and, and analyzing it properly may be part of the solution to figuring out how to make your life better, happier, and more, uh, more full of energy.